Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, as we begin to study and learn more about you tonight, we ask you, Father God, that keep us in your blessing plan. We need you, Father God. Father, we want to learn more about you, and we thank you for everything that you've always and always have done for us. And then, Father God, we want to thank you for our life, health, and our strength. And Father God, as we begin to study your word tonight, give the speaker what you see that he should have so that we can learn from him. And we want him to learn from you. Yes. And we want to ask these and so many other blessings in the precious name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you, Mother Henry. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, this evening's Bible study lesson is a good one. And tonight I really want to talk on the subject of how God continues to move us in our faith. And so we want to talk about trusting God with an, you know, we have a series and you notice we've been talking about trusting God intentionally on purpose, deliberately. And so this is continuing our intentional faith series. Uh, and we're discussing tonight when God's favor takes us from being barren and distressed to being blessed. And believe it or not, that is a journey. Uh, if you've never been in a space where you just didn't seem to have anything fruitful taking place and you just felt barren, um, that's a tough place to be. And sometimes I like to call that place being between thank you, Lord, and Lord have mercy. Uh, you know, sometimes you're thanking God, you know, while at the same time you're like, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to keep this up or how I'm going to make it. And trusting God requires faith, period. Uh, trusting God requires faith because, again, as we talk about this thing called reality, reality presents to you one thing. And faith is telling you, don't worry about what you see. Just trust me. And that's tough. And so tonight I want to talk uh, out of the book of First Samuel, the first chapter, chapter uh, verse 10 through 18. But our key verse uh, tonight is coming from Psalms 28, verse 7. And it's the part A part of that verse that I really wanted to hang my hat on tonight. And that scripture in Psalms 28 Verse 7a says this, that the Lord is my strength and my shield. In him, my heart trusts, and I am helped. And David is talking from personal experience. He's letting the readers know that the Lord is his strength and his shield. He finds his comfort. He feels protected in the Lord. He feels uh, strengthened in the Lord. And he feels that when his heart needs to trust anything, when he can't trust what he's seeing, when he can't trust what he's feeling, his heart can trust in the Lord. And when he finds that he find when he finds himself trusting in the Lord, he knows he's going to be helped. He feels helped even before the help comes. And that's quite an interesting formula. You know, in fact, we usually hear the song that says, don't wait till the battle over, shout now uh, to to believe that God is our help. And I love that song Hezekiah, wrote, Hezekiah Walker wrote a few years ago titled Jesus is my help. And it's one of my favorite scriptures uh, where he says my help coming from the Lord, you know, and um, and so as we're reading this lesson tonight, uh, that is kind of where our theme is is directed. And so I want us tonight to talk have a conversation. I'm gonna share with you some of the scriptures here, but we're gonna just talk tonight. And really, I want you to minister and just kind of share uh, so that those who will come back and watch the replay will be ministered to as well. But we're gonna talk about what it means to trust God, especially when we need to trust God. And we know that we need to trust him, period. If we're gonna make it through this world, we need to trust him. And so um, when we do, uh, I believe that we will be helped just like David was helped. Uh, let's go to the scripture real quick to uh, Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1. And let's start reading that verse 10. All right. Uh, 
All right. And I'm going to read from my CSB Bible tonight, the Christian Standard Version. I'm going to read from that version tonight. And so let's go with verse 10. It says here, oh, where is it? it says, deeply hurt, Hannah prayed to the Lord and wept with many tears, making a vow she, pled, she pleaded, Lord of armies, if you will take notice of your servant's affliction, remember not remember and not forget me and give your servant the son. I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and his hair will never be cut. While she continued praying in the Lord's presence, Eli watched her mouth. Hannah was praying silently and he thought her lips were not moving. Her voice could not be heard and Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, how long are you going to be drunk? Get rid of your wine. No, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman with a broken heart. I haven't had any wine or beer. I've been pouring out my heart before the Lord. Don't think of me as a wicked woman. I've been praying from the depth of my anguish and my resentment. And Eli responded, go in peace and may God of Israel grant thee the request you have made of him. Verse 18 says, may your servant find favor with you, she replied. Then Hannah went on her way and she ate and no longer looked despondent. When she had permission to just go in peace and just the fact that she had someone to answer and affirm her prayer gave her a sense of peace and calm. But she had a petition. She had a prayer request that she needed God to do something for her. And so uh, let's let's dive into a little bit of the history here to get this in context. So uh, the people of Israel were considered a blessing from God, right? And they were his chosen people. And if they were their chosen people, Abram had already been promised when he was named Abraham that he would be a father of many nations. And so for women who could not have children, especially in the biblical days, who could not have children and they were considered barren, that was a big deal for them not being able to have children. And I still think that's a big deal for, for a lot of the women today who want to be mothers and cannot be. And so that spirit or that, that season of being treated as a barren person brought about a certain level of shame. It was almost like my wife explained it once I heard a minister. She said uh, that it was almost like you weren't really a full woman unless you could have children. And, and so here she is in this state of barrenness and she feels in so many words cursed, like something is wrong. And so here she is praying before the Lord, asking God for a blessing, but she's, she, she's, she's in distress. She's anguish. She has anguish. Uh, she, she's barren, not having any uh, ability to do anything about her situation. And my question to us tonight, have we ever been there? Have we ever done everything we know to do? We could do it if we if we could do it. You know, we would do it if we had the resources. We would uh, uh, get some things done if we had the time. You know, if we had the education, if we could have done this or whatever. And some of us, you know, we have loved ones who, if they would have had the chance to go to school, like we've been blessed to go to school, man, where would we be? Where would we be if our grandparents' parents could have had that same opportunity? And we've had a lot of things standing in our way that have, in, a, in some ways, have impeded our progress. And when you look at everybody else who's having things going well, they're being fruitful, they're multiplying, they are seeing increase, and yet here we are having some issues. And so in this text here, Hannah who is barren is one of many in the Bible that that goes through this season to show that it is very common to have season of barrenness where you're just empty and you don't have anything, no proof that anything can be done. We saw in a lesson we had a few months ago where Jesus looked at a barren fig tree and the fig tree was meant to produce, but it had not. At one point, he wanted to cut it down and the, the, the garden master said, look, let it be. 
leave it alone one more year. Let me work with it. Let me dunk it. Let me let me work with it and see if I can get it to grow. Right. But what if you can't get it to grow? What if you can't get something to change? Would you not find yourself in the same position as Hannah praying before the Lord earnestly, sincerely, with, with zeal, just begging God for something different? And I can only imagine her mindset where she was. But see, again, Hannah wasn't the only person. Sarah was like that. Rebecca was also barren. Rachel was also barren. And even Samson's mother, the great and mighty Samson, was barren. But notice all the women that I just called, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Samson's mother, all of them had children. But what about being in the state before they had the children? They hadn't reached the point of being blessed yet. And so in the book of 1 Samuel, it opens up with Hannah's story, and she's deeply distressed. She's in, uh, she's anxious. She's barren. She's she's even often provoked by her husband's uh, other wife. And that right there, <laughs> when you when you've been mocked by your enemy, and when you've been mocked by someone who has what you are wanting, but you can't get it. It kind of sets you in a bad space emotionally. Uh, I guess I want to ask the question. Have any of you ever been in a place where you needed God to do something for you and you saw him doing it for other people and you were you weren't sure if he was going to do it for you? Have anybody ever just been there before? I know as a young man, I was there coming out of high school. I saw people getting scholarships, had friends who got football scholarships, and I wanted that. You know, I saw some people going to the military other things like that. And they were really good on their future. And I was worried about mine. I'll be totally honest with you. I've never been so afraid in my life than when I was in high school. So that's kind of why I'm very sensitive to high school kids in their journey, because that's a rough place to be. Anybody else ever been there? Yeah, Pastor, I have. You want to share? You feel like sharing? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, in my earlier years of uh, uh, right after I had my oldest daughter, I seen all of my friends. Uh, they was married and uh, they was just having a fabulous life. Mm. And I just wondered, what did I do wrong? Mm. So when I, I had to sit down and think about it, and my mother had sit me down and she told me it's nothing that I'm doing that's wrong. It's what I have to do to correct that problem mm. and to not to look at other people's uh, thinking they are better than I were. She said, because God created us all. Mm -hmm. And I had to really think that out on my own. So after that period in my life, that's when I realized I have to trust God for myself. And I just believed in him that everything I needed and wanted that he would give it to me. He didn't give it to me when I wanted it, but he always made sure that I had it when it was time for me to have it. Mm -hmm. I have been short on uh, money before, mm -hmm. and then I had money to come in. I didn't know where it come from. I was blessed with the job when I walked off a job because of my anger. Mm -hmm. I walked off and God blessed me the mm -hmm. very next week to go on a job and I stayed on that one job for 22 years. But good God. Wow. And I, I've just, God has just been good to me. Mm -hmm. and, and I thank him for it. I mm -hmm. may not always look like an actor to show it, but deep down in my heart, mm -hmm. I know who I am and nobody can beat me being me. Hmm, amen. Amen. I say that all the time too. That's, that's true. And, and you know, when you're barren, sometimes that barren season is not as long as you think sometimes. You know, yeah, and you're right. Mm -hmm. you're, the you're barren so season right. isn't as long. I mean, the, the the fig tree had one year to produce. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and, and and sometimes we have to be reminded that that it's never too late for the Lord to bless us. That's if, right. If even if it takes twenty years, twenty years ain't too long. My dad used to say that all the time. He said that a preacher told him that when he was younger that twenty years wasn't too long for God to bless him. And I have mm -hmm. to be honest with you, my dad started off pretty. Pretty. Um, it was a difficult journey for him as a minister when he first started off, and and before he left this earth, he was a bishop. 
you know, okay. God had just ex ex blessed him to, to go great, great places. And he did things he never thought he would do. But someone mm -hmm. prophesied that in his life at, at a young age. And so you're right. Sometimes it don't take long for God to do something, even if it seems like it's a long time. It's still not yes. long, is it? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's wonderful. Anybody else want to share something real quick before we move on? I really want to hear from you. Okay, okay uh, Pastor Al, um, share. Um, yeah. at the, when I was in, um, when I got out of um, college, mm -hmm. I, after all of the years of studying and putting all my efforts into everything that I was going to do, it was just very disappointing and and uh, when I got out, when I seen everybody else getting all these big jobs and getting all of these promotions and everything, and in the beginning, I it just didn't seem like I could get anything that mm. that really mattered at the time. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, well, what well, did I do something wrong? Did, mm -hmm. did something happen wrong along the way? What did I miss? that I was supposed to do that mm -hmm. I did not do. So it was very disappointing to me to have spent all of that time and that energy. And, and one would say, well, as long as you go to school and you go to college, you can get whatever you want. And it just wasn't materializing for me mm -hmm. the way that um, I wanted it to. But um, even though I was dis uh, discouraged, I just um, had to, really take a little bit of time to say well i well i don't know how it's gonna go lord but but i'm just gonna keep on trusting you in the midst of what it is what, in whatever the struggle is that i have to go through and as long as i stop trying to figure it out when i stop trying to figure it out myself mm -hmm. i was able to get into places and opportunities to be able to do the things that I needed to do. But as for me, I had to stop being so conceited mm. because I felt that I, wow. I had been so good that this is where I needed to be. But he let me know nobody is so good. So he had to put me down to wow. bring me back up again. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. And, you know, Hannah's competition, the other wife was very conceited. Mm -hmm. very conceited but the thing is the difference was though she was conceited she was not favored mm -hmm. you see and sometimes the people who are conceited can't be favored mm -hmm. that's where favor comes in with humility god yeah. favors you not because of your conceitedness or your pride in fact mm -hmm. god hates pride mm -hmm. that's one of the big things he yeah. just does mm -hmm. not care for you know that's why i tell people all the time you have to humble yourself because don't make god humble you he'll embarrass you yeah he will literally embarrass you so you have to humble yourself that is up to you to do and and you'll find that when you humble yourself and and, and god will work with you as you do that because i'm sure that that conceit that you know the being conceited like that i'm sure that was a journey in its own yes it was <laughs> oh my gosh yes it was <laughs> Wow, that's something. you helping us tonight. <laughs> Anybody else? That's good. That's real good. Anybody else? One more. Go ahead, Mother Barbara. Yeah. Miss yes. Okay. Hey, Brother Albert. Go ahead. I have something that I had to wrestle with. Um, I came up and um, uh, seemed like everybody owned a house except us. Mm. And uh, and uh, my grand, neither my grandparents uh, owned a, ever owned a home. We did not own one. And every first of the month, this old white man come by. He want to know where's your dad. I told my mother, I, said, I hope I don't ever have to live like this. Somebody come by bugging me. Not to, my dad didn't get paid to Friday. He started coming by Monday first of the month. Mm -hmm. So I said I I wanted to own a home. And I went to work at 17, and at 19, I bought my first home Looking at good. 19 years old. Wow. And I, and I kept it for 54 years. I sold it mm. this year. Wow. And, uh, and I always just thank the Lord for it. And the blessed part about it, I owned it, and I was able to build me a home, my wife built a home, and give that home to my mother, whom had never wow. owned a home. And always count that a blessing. Amazing. Wow. 
That's amazing, Dee. That is absolutely amazing. And but can you remember your frustration? Can you remember your frustration? You know, when you were in the middle of waiting for God to bless you, though, do you remember that? Yes, yes, and mm -hmm. I, I do. And and I, I'm well. I remember. I was young, but I remember mm -hmm. it so well. Mm -hmm. And I felt mm -hmm. like we were smaller than the rest of the people in the community because the way we had, you know, what we did not have. It was only nine of us, and nobody worked mm -hmm. but Dad. So did nobody have too much, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, mm -hmm. and the Lord blessed us so good, and to, mm -hmm. I was able to, to build me out and give my mother that one. And she thought more of that little house than I thought of my new house. Wow! You know? Wow! <laughs> you know why? I thought that was hers. <laughs> That's right. Amen. I love it. I yeah. love it. <laughs> That's good. That's a wonderful she, testimony. She, she, yes. she, my mother loved flowers. I mean, she had flowers to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget when I gave it to her and we was planting some flowers one spring. And she said, I will never have to move my flowers anymore. Oh, you that's know. all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. Man, that's all right. It's a blessing going. It's, it's, it's wonderful mm -hmm. when God finally gets you through whatever it is you're going through. And that's why this lesson, we're talking about that tonight, about how God moves us through point from the point of being barren to the point of just being blessed beyond blessed. Mm -hmm. You know, because Amen. we can't get where God has brought us from. You know, Hannah cried bitterly. She was bitter. She was angry. You know, and I don't know if y'all ever, there's a difference between crying when you're sad. Yeah. And crying when you're mad. <laughs> when you mad and you crying, that's a real problem. Because I don't know about y'all. I can admit it. I have been mad with God on some stuff. I have been mad at God. I really have. Because I wanted some things and I felt like he wasn't being fair. He wasn't hearing me. And I'm like, Lord, I want this. You know, you said if I prayed, you would give me this or whatever. And sometimes God is like, I got something way better for you. Right, I got something else. But notice what Hannah does. She prays, she weeps, number one. She allows her true emotions to come to the surface. Don't miss this. When you got a serious, Jesus said, they that worship me must worship me in what? True. Spirit and in truth. True. True. So I need y'all to write down the word or just say the word. False, uh, 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 what's the word I want to say? Um, uh, what is it? Toxic positivity. That's the word. Okay. Toxic positivity. Toxic positivity is a real thing where people try to use words to overshadow what they really feeling. And I know we use that and we say, oh, don't say try. Or don't say it is. No, that's being, a, that's, 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 that's being, a, that's lying. You know, it's okay to say that I'm not going to say try. But if all I got is a try, that's all I got. That's right. right. That's if it. All I got yeah. is a try. I still believe in that mm -hmm. old saying, nothing beats a failure but a try. I believe in that. Mm -hmm. If I ain't got nothing else, I can at least try. You see, I can't promise that I'm going to do it as far as overcoming something, but I'm going to show a try. Right? Mm -hmm. And guess what? If I fail, I can always try again. If at first you don't yeah. succeed, what? Try, 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 try again, right? Try so again. I have to be honest with myself. And that's what Hannah did. Hannah was honest. She was weeping because she was in pain. And most of us practice toxic positivity. You happy no matter what. Wait a minute. I'm not happy right now. I got a problem. I'm upset, right? And there's nothing wrong with saying that. The Bible says anger, but what? Now, did Jesus practice toxic positivity when he walked into the temple and the folks was money changing up in there? No, no. What did he do? He turned the table. Yeah. Why? Why? He was angry. He was angry. He was angry. He was angry. He, he didn't hide that. Mm -hmm. He was angry. What about when, when Lazarus died and he finally showed up? 
What did Jesus do? He what? He went. He went. He went. He went. Did he try to hide that? No. 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 He didn't. What about when they came to his disciples and he loved them? Did he hide his love for them? No. No. He openly no. loved them. What about the ones who disappointed him and couldn't right. follow him? What did he do about them? Did he get mad at them and all that kind of stuff? He loved, he loved them. them. He loved them. He didn't loved hide them. that. Mm -hmm. If he was disappointed in the right. disciples, if they did something that they weren't supposed to do, or if they kind of lacked faith and he didn't repeat himself at least 25, 35 times and they still didn't get it, did he hide his frustration? No. 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 Sometimes he would say, how long are I going to be with y'all? Y'all know I ain't going to be with y'all forever. Y'all got to get this. He just called mm -hmm. up. That's honest. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. And so the lesson tonight is helping us to understand that if we're going to be reassured in our faith, we need to be honest, number one. We need to be honest. The That's man the who came to Jesus, need to be the man who came to Jesus, whose son was in trouble, vexed with demons, his disciples couldn't get him out. And he says, look, I've tried your disciples. I've tried this. I've tried that. But nothing is happening. And Jesus says, don't fear, believe. And the man said, I, I can do that, but help my unbelief. Help me with that part. Help me to bridge the part from, from what I desire is to believe. But there's a part of me that's unbelieving and I can't cross this bridge because I'm afraid it's going to fall apart. It won't hold me up. Can you help me with that? And Jesus acknowledged that. That's fine. I got this. You know, and Jesus' disciples asked him, how did you, how did you do this? What made you what was so different about what you did and what we did? And Jesus says, this comes by fasting and praying. This type of anointing comes through fasting and praying. There's a difference, right? And so when we find ourselves in a state of emotional reality, dealing with what's really going on and we're hurting or we're afraid or we're angry or we're confused, guess what? You need to admit that. Jesus said, if you're going to worship me, be honest about it. So that means that while you're giving God praise, you may have some concern, but I'm going to praise him anyway. Uh-oh. I'm going to praise him through it. I'm going to praise him, though I'm unsure how this is going to work out. I'm just going to have to believe God going to work it out. Yes, I'm afraid. Yes, I'm concerned. But I'm going to put my concerns on him. The Bible says, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. So if I'm concerned, I need to throw that on Jesus because I can't carry that by myself. Right. If I can't carry that by myself, then I need to throw it on Jesus. Who's going to care for me? And that's what Hannah was doing. She was praying to God bitterly, but she kept on praying. Notice she was crying bitterly. She was weeping bitterly, but she was still praying. What do we do when we get upset? Do we stop coming to church? Do we stop attending Bible study? Do we stop coming to Sunday school? All because we didn't have yeah, bad no. experience? Come on. No. You no. Say, well, some people do. Some people, people do. Some people. Yeah, some people do, but that's not what you should do. Yeah, but, but you don't need to be. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. Right no. But that's not what people do. Mm hmm. Yeah. And they should do that. You know, and that's that's where that's what we have to learn, that we have to pray through these moments. We have to pray through these feelings. But if you worship, if you get used to worship him, worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth, then it won't be so odd. You'll be free to be mad. You will be liberated to be upset. You'll be free to say, God, I'm confused. Help me. I don't understand, right? And you can talk to him. And trust me, you'll have a closer relationship with the Lord than anything when you can be honest with him versus practicing toxic positivity. Saying that, oh, yeah, the cloud is wonderful. It's raining, storming outside. And you're talking about it's sunshine outside. Come on now. You're not being honest, right? So if you're honest with him, he said, you're going to watch me. You got to be honest with me. And I don't think God wants us to lie to him. He doesn't want us to have false humility, right? Um, who was it? Um, was it Gideon? When the when the when when the when when the when the angel of the Lord came to him and said, "That mighty man of valor, valor Gideon, like who me, man? I'm nobody." 
why are you calling me that? I'm out here trying to do, I'm the least of my tribe, right? And, and Gideon, even though he felt this way, uh, he when he was told to do something, he said, listen, let me prove this. If, if this is what you want me to do, Lord, let the grass be wet and the, and, and, the, and the fleece be dry. And then when God did it, he said, well, let the fleece be dry and the grass be wet. He wanted to make sure. Guess what? God didn't mind because he was being honest. He didn't hide that. Most of us are lying and say, okay, God, I believe you. And then as soon as we get out of his presence, leave church. I don't know if God's going to do that for me. Come on, y'all. <laughs> you know, we do that. And God see you. And sometimes we act like God don't hear us. He knows our heart. He can hear what our mouth say, but he knows what our heart means. Th does that make sense? You can say one thing with your mouth, but what does your heart say? What does your spirit say? What Are you willing to trust God truly? And so here is Hannah in this state. She's really having a hard time. And so she's one day near the temple. She is praying. She's giving God uh, her prayers. And one thing she does, which is interesting because we still do this, she begins to barter with God. She said, Lord, if you bless me, I'm going to give him back to you. Now, how many of us have made a promise to the Lord and said, Lord, if you get me out of this, I ain't never going to do this again. Or we make some type of barter with him. And I believe not, ain't nothing I wrong did with it that. several times. Come on through. That's what yeah, I'm well, doing. I did. Actually, I did it more than a several times. I did it Amen. sometime lately, but I had to just go yes. back and take this thing out. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. And guess what? It's important that if you're going to make God a promise like that, you better keep it. And I know. That's true. I had to face that in my lifetime, too, Pastor. I've been there before. Yeah. I made mm -hmm. a promise and I didn't hold up to it. But when things started to go downhill, he brought it back to my memory. Yeah, yes. He will do that. He will do he that. Will do and it. sometimes God does. Sometimes certain things do require a, a vow. Sometimes certain things do require sacrifice. That's why I yes. practice sanctification, y'all. That's really big. To understand sanctification. Mm -hmm. Sanctification is setting yourself apart. And sometimes that means giving yes. up something you really love. Now, yep. Hannah and didn't even had a child yet, but she had to give up her child before she was even given a child. Isn't that interesting? She had already given it up before she even got the child. She said, I'm going to give you whatever you give me, I'm going to give it back to you. Be yours. Just give me a child. Isn't that interesting? How many of us are willing to do that? Lord, give me a million dollars. I'm going to give it back to you. Most of us wouldn't do that, right? And so... I'll be honest. I have to think about that. <laughs> I knew somebody was going to be honest with me. I, was wait. I knew somebody was going to be honest. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I saw... I, I don't know if I shared a video with you guys before. Well, I think I may have mentioned it before where the man gave somebody... Uh, a man walked up to a guy and gave him a whole box of donuts. And he asked, and he says, well, all right, well, enjoy your donuts. And the guy says, why are you giving me donuts? He said, I just wanted to be a blessing to you. He said, well, thanks. He said, well, listen, before I go, can I get one donut? I do have a little ways to go. And the man said, no, nah, um, I think I'm going to need to take this home. He said, can I just have one? He said, no, I'm going to probably be a little bit hungry later on, and I want to eat a few and take a few home to my wife and kids and stuff. And, and that's interesting how God can bless us with stuff, and we won't even give him any of it back. He blesses us with a new morning. We will, he gives us a whole day. And half of us will go the whole day and won't even talk to him. Won't pray. Won't thank him. Won't even acknowledge him. And the Bible tells us in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to know and understand him. But in all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he will what? Direct your Direct path. our paths. Right. So we should do that in all things. And so we have to be careful to make sure that we give back what God gives to us. Brother Lily? Amen. Oh no, that was a mistake. Oh, that's okay. I was trying, I, I was trying to hit the microphone, and I hit the. Oh, not man, a problem. That was a mistake. Oh, not a problem. Well, the whole point I'm trying to make is that Hannah was willing to give God something for what she was requesting, and most of us ask God all the time for things, but we're never willing to give Him back anything. Right. Think about that for a second. Seriously, think about that. Mm -hmm. How do you think that makes God feel? Of course, he don't really need anything back from us, but it's nothing wrong with giving God something. He doesn't, he doesn't, right. have, he doesn't need anything from us. He he's always given us and 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 we sometimes we don't give him anything back. 
but he uh, he's always given to us, always. And we're always expecting him to give to us. Mm-hmm. But we need to give back. Um, and, you know, like, like you say, God don't need it. We don't give it to God. We, we help others. We do for others. We, you work in the church. Use your talent. Work in the church. Um, doing God's will. These are the things where, where you're giving it back to God. These are the things that you need to do. This is how you're working Amen. back with, when you're working Amen. back with God. Helping the word is less important than you are. That's right. Absolutely. That's, important. Mm-hmm. That's very important. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Very good. Right. But my you see, and, and so that's that's why the principle of tithing is so important. God mm-hmm. only asks us for one tenth of what He gives us, and mm-hmm. see, and you still have the other ninety percent to do whatever you want with it. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and like He says in Malachi, you know, bring my tithes to the storehouse and see if I won't do what I said. I'll open up mm-hmm. the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. That's right. And, and if, you, That's right. if you're if you willing to trust God in that, you will see a blessing in your life, not only in your finances, mm-hmm. but in your growth. Because Absolutely. if you give of your tithes and you give of your time, you know, God will, he will bless you. Absolutely. Absolutely. He and he, he will. will. He will. And that's yes. something you have to understand, you know. Beyond your frustration, beyond your feelings, beyond your doubt and concerns and your 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 uh, skepticisms, you know, all those things can be roadblocks. But when you get to a point where you can pray through it to get yes. to it, mm-hmm. and God brings yes. you through it, then you have to give God something. And this is why we say the least you ought to do is give God praise. The least you ought to do is say thank you. Give him thank you. Give him a praise. Give him a life. Give him your soul. Give him your heart. Give him the work of your of your hands. You know, uh, give him something. You know, what can you offer the Lord? That's why I like that song. You can't be God's given no matter how hard you try. You just can't beat it. Right. As much as the Lord gives to us, he's going to always out give us. But you ought to give him something. Give him some of your time. Give him something. And so this is an offering that we can give to him when he offers reassurance to us that he's hearing us. He's offering reassurance to us that he is going to answer our prayer. But we may be at the starting point, which may be the barrenness where we don't have where we have a deficit. We're in need of something. See, that's the thing. God always supplies our needs. He supplies our needs according to his riches and glory. He supplies them. That's what he does. All that I need is still in Jesus. He satisfies us. He he makes sure that we have everything we could possibly need. Sometimes we don't know what we need. Sometimes we don't have a clue. We think we know what we need. Hannah needed a child. But the question is, why do you think she needed a child? What was her real need? Was it really just just a child? What do you think she needed? No, she, she wanted some some something to love or somebody to love her. That's a good answer. What else do you think she really needed? I'm just curious to know what y'all what y'all think she needed. Y'all know the story of Hannah, right? Somebody she said needed, love. She needed love. Who else? She needed a child just to satisfy her. I'll say her cute. She just needed a child so that she could be satisfied. Because like you say, uh, back in the day, they they looked on a lady in a different way if they didn't have a child. So she wanted a child to satisfy her curiosity. And she also wanted a child because the other lady was always picking at her. And that's how mm-hmm. I would feel. If I had someone mm-hmm. always picking on me because I didn't have a child, I, I want yep. a child, I, you know, and I want to mm-hmm. be happy. I want to have a child. That's exactly what I was. That's just exactly for, what I was thinking, Barbara. She mm-hmm. wanted measure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She wanted mm-hmm. measure from the other women. That's what she wanted. Yeah, she wanted to feel like a mother. She wanted to be. She did. She didn't want to be considered barren. She didn't want that title right. anymore. She didn't right. want. She didn't want. She wanted to experience what it meant to be a mother. And looking at all the children running around, I mean, that had to be tough on her. And 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 right. and also having 
to be second, you know, having to be um uh, a, to share her husband. And of course, in the Bible days, they, they had right. one wife. That made her feel right. less than, right? right. That means that right. in the system of of, of uh, equality, she she wasn't equal with the other one. The other woman was outdoing her because she was producing more children. And you think in legacy at this point, right? And, and with right. that happening, she was like, my goodness, I'm, not, I'm getting further and further behind. Every time this other girl has a baby, it's just pushing me further and further behind. But what was what made it worse was the other woman was taunting her. That's right. She, she was, was that was the main she thing. Was taunting her. Right. And this is the thing. This is the mm -hmm. thing. Look here, man. Look, look, look. Your enemy might have some blessings, might have some things going on, but I promise you, when God come through and blesses you, whoo, they they the Bible says says, I reckon that the present sufferings of this present world aren't even worthy to be compared to the glory that is yet to be revealed in us. Yes, hallelujah. I promise you, know, you Pastor, whatever you go through. I promise you, whatever it is you're going through, when God finally bless you and brings you through it, hmm, nobody can, you, they won't you, even be able to compare it. Go ahead, mother. I know, I, I've told you the story about when I was in college and, and I was just barely making it. I, I you know, I had to pray every mm -hmm. quarter that whether I was going to get my uh, grant or whether I was going to get my loan. And then I had all these friends and they were, um, they parents was basically paying for them to go to school but mm. then when i look back i told y'all this the other day but but and so that was a kind of burden on me and I, but i i i i worked hard and mm -hmm. i tried to always do my best to pass so I, you know and i made good grades so i made good grades and i worked hard and i always look back at that and i told y'all this mm -hmm. and um in my closet my roommate, I told you in my closet, I had about five outfits. My my roommate, she had her closet full and then she had my closet full. And then I was telling you all that now I have so many closets full of clothes that I, 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 I want to give it away. But during my college year, it was a struggle. And that it mm. really was a struggle. Because I, I had imagine. to pray how I'm a, how I'm gonna get my finance and mm. and and, but it was a struggle. My and I gosh. always think back to that, where I am now, how good God was to me and how Amen. good he still is. Amen. How good he still is. I'm just looking back then to where I am now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God has really brought me a long way. And like you say, your, mm -hmm. my blessing is so much more bigger than mm -hmm. where I was when I was in school. Amen. But God is good. Amen. When you look at when you look at the child that God gave Hannah, we don't even know the other children's name from the other woman, do we? Right. right. We don't know, even though their names may be in the Bible in the story. But the one name we didn't know, his name was Samuel. 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 Samuel was a mighty man of God, prophet of God, who anointed kings. He yes, anointed he was. David. Yes, he was. He anointed Saul yes. first, but then he anointed David in privacy. And, and this is who God used. He talked to God directly. You see? This is what he did. And so this is the type of blessing that God did. He brought uh, redemption. He brought uh, vindication by answering the prayer. And that's what I love about God. He won't let you languish in suffering he won't let you just languish in in your season of barrenness you know and i love that when you can't seem to fi figure out how to get beyond something god says just wait on it the scripture teaches us they that wait up on the lord shall renew their strength they shall what mount up on wings as eagle they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint walk so the point is you gotta pray through these emotions these feelings you but to you gotta pray. be real you gotta be real too. You gotta you gotta pray, but you gotta be real, and that's that's the challenge for most of us church folks. We have a tendency to 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 churchify everything. You know, you can't churchify everything. You gotta be honest with some things and say, hey, there's some water in this boat, and I'm starting to get a little worried. I'm afraid I ain't gonna make it, right? And, and you can get a little scared, and that's just being honest. You can get scared, but all because you're afraid, you have to be mindful. God has not given us the spirit of fear. 
We're not supposed to embrace that fear, but of love, peace, and a sound mind. And that's why it's important that we truly understand that when we are afraid, even Jesus himself got afraid, y'all. Did he not? Let's be honest. He was still human and he was still God, but he got scared. I mean, really scared. And the disciples fell asleep on him in his greatest hour of fear. Now, he wasn't afraid when he was on the cross. It was already happening. He was afraid before he got there. He said, let this cup pass from me. He didn't even want to go further into it. So we find ourselves in these places. And here is David in Psalms 28, who said that the Lord is my strength and my shield. Why would he need to be your strength? Because there's going to be a season in your life where you ain't going to have any. Why does he need to be your shield? Because when the enemy is attacking you with fiery darts and arrows, you need something to protect you. He says, in him, my heart trusts. That means I trust that God is going to get me through it. I trust that God is not going to let me die at the hand of my enemy. I trust that God is going to bless me to overcome this, right? And then he says, I am helped just knowing that God got my back. Ooh, my, my, my. Y'all better, man, look. If you read Psalms 28, 1 through 2, in verse 69, let's read it. And it says it right here. It says, to you, O Lord. Psalms 28, verse 1 through 2, says, To you, O Lord, I call my rock, be not deaf to me, lest if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my pleas for my for for, for mercy when I cry to you for help. When I lift up my hands towards your most holy sanctuary, blessed be the Lord. For he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him, my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts and with my song, I give thanks to him. See, by giving something back, he says, I give thanks to him. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Oh, save your people and bless your heritage be their shepherd and carry them forever. That's a prayer. And that's what David is letting us know that, look, we're covered. We're covered. And so if you find yourself in a state like Hannah, where you're needing God to bless you in your season of barrenness, where you're just needing God to do something, and there's nothing wrong with needing something from God. Sometimes we feel like, well, why do I always need something from God? Because he's our provider. I need him to wake me up tomorrow. If he so chooses, I want him to wake me up tomorrow. But if he don't, I want to be ready to meet him. I want to be prepared. If he comes tonight, if he comes tomorrow, if he comes next week, if he comes right now, I want to be prepared. But everything I need, I should be able to say what the Lord told his disciples to say. When you pray, say, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. So, Lord, I need my daily bread for you every day, right? And so I can't be afraid to ask for what I need. The Bible says, let your request be made known unto the Lord. And that's what Hannah did. This is way before Jesus came. She had a sincere and serious request. My challenge to you tonight, I don't know what your requests are. I don't know what requests you have before the Lord, but whatever it is, you take it to him. If it's a stronger marriage, stronger relationship, uh, more faith, more wisdom and understanding, financial uh, understanding, or uh, you asking God to help you with a business or whatever it is. Nothing is too big or great. Nothing's too small to ask God for. My mom and my dad used to teach us years ago, it ain't worth having if it ain't worth asking for. And I believe that. I really do. If you want something from the Lord, ask him. My question for you tonight, as we're getting ready to wrap up, um, these are some questions I want to ask you. When you're waiting for a response from God, how much does it help you to be reminded that God is your strength and shield and that God will come through for you eventually? I want to hear from everybody real quick, and we're going to wrap this up. Sister Kavina, you there? I want to hear from you. When you're waiting for a response from God, how much does it help you to be reminded that God is your strength and shield and that he will come through for you eventually. I want to hear from everybody. Um, it helps a lot. It, it helps a lot to Go remember ahead. that. And mm-hmm. I'll say that because, 
your your sermon on Sunday was right on time. Uh, mm. Dion was listening to it, and he ended up getting a call from his job about some crazy stuff. So he thought he was about to lose his job. He was literally, we were, you know, thinking he was going to lose his job. Mm -hmm. And I just thought about the things that God blessed us with, with our home. Mm. And I remember, you know, just God, and I just got a new car. So I was like, you know, and I was talking, we and I was talking, and what I started to do was I started praying, and I was like, God, I know you didn't put me, you didn't let me just go get this new car for mm. him to lose his job. I know you didn't give us this house mm -hmm. for, you know, for him to lose his job. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, and I was speaking it, and it, it took your sermon to remember, to remind me mm. to, you Thank know, you. have faith and Thank to put it out there. So instead of me getting scared, you know, and worrying like I used to, I just put my faith in God. And I was like, you know what, God. God this is, you know, this is what you said. This is what you're doing. I expect this from you because I know you didn't do put me here when we prayed on it, you know, just mm -hmm. to try back around and let us suffer. Amen. And um, long story short, he ended up getting the call that day and they said, I'm sorry. That was, it was a misunderstanding and basically just gave him all kind of kudos and everything and told him how much he needed them. They needed him. <laughs> so it ended up turning around. So it's like, it, it helps a whole lot to remember yeah. The promises of God, because if you don't, you can fall by the wayside real quick. Hallelujah! That's, That's all right. That's wonderful, man. Ain't God all right? That's all right, man. That's awesome. Anybody else? Thank you, Michelle. That was wonderful. Thank you for sharing that with us. That was a blessing to hear. Good evening. I'll just throw a little bit in there. Hey, uh, Dean Coco. Only thing I said, he never failed me yet. Mm. So. Whatever you're asking for, you just wait and be patient and wait on the Lord. He'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. It's all through the years. I mean, uh, he's just really been good. I, I was just thinking about the day. The, the, the smaller, the smaller things I look at is is a blessing to me. My mom and dad lived up in their eighties and nineties, and they didn't lose a child while they was here. And that's to me, that's a real big blessing not to lose a it child. Is. It is uh, before you, so. Mm -hmm. And it's been a real, it's been a good ride for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna ride, ride, ride this one on, on into heaven. Amen. Most of the about whatever, whatever I ask, I, it comes through. I've, I've, I've had a, a simple and a pretty easy life. Amen. That's wonderful. Thank you. To God be the glory. That's wonderful. Anybody else? I want to hear from you. Talk to me. Well, I, I've already talked. But I just want to say this, Pastor. Um, yeah. My thing is, um, when I'm going through, I have been through so many things, and I've seen what God done. So I just reminisce back on the on on my past, what He has done. Mm -hmm. It may not always be in a short time; sometimes in a long time. But when I'm going mm -hmm. through, I always think, "Say, Lord, I know what You can do. I've seen things that You've done, and that's how you know. That's how I make it through." As I make it Amen. Through. Amen. Amen. So when you're waiting for a response from God, how does it make help you to be reminded? How does it how much does it help you to be reminded that God is your strength and shield and that God will come through for you eventually? That's the question. Yes, he will. He will. He is my he's he, he is my he mm -hmm. is the strength and shield. Mm -hmm. He's the one that helps me to go through it. I mean, mm -hmm. he's my help and he's my shield. That's mm -hmm. all the time, all day long. I, I can mm -hmm. I can think of something every day that mm -hmm. God uh, has done. Amen. Just the, some little simple thing that he has done. Um, he's my strength and, and my shield. The other day, Abbott and I almost, we almost was in a very bad accident. Sure. And I'm, I, it had to have been God who, who who protect us from that. And so I know Thank he's you. always there, even when yes. we're not thinking, when we are not thinking, God is yes. there. Amen. He's always been so good. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank God for protection. Amen. Woo. Thank God. Again, the question is being asked, when you're waiting for a response from God, how much does it help you to be reminded that God is your strength and shield and that God will come through for you eventually? That's the question. Well, when you when you're going through that, that's the only thing that's going to help you. When you're really going through situations and you're struggling through, if you don't know that, you're going to lose your mind. 
you truly lose your mind. But when you know that God is going to be your shield and he's going to be your protection, mm -hmm. it allows you to just be able to, to just stand and go through it a little bit longer because you know, well, I'm not going through it by myself. God is going to go through whatever it is that happens to me. So mm -hmm. even when it's a bad situation and a bad day, mm -hmm. what helps is I can still look and say, expect something of God. Mm -hmm. I can expect him to do something even in the most messed up situation because I believe the scripture that says your latter days are going to be so much better than your former days. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. And I really believe that your ladder is going to be going to be greater. I really do. Yeah. I believe your ladder is going to be greater. Pastor, That's the truth. Pastor, I would, I would seem to think that we would all say that, yes, it does help us to remember but mm -hmm. me, I could think of like Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him? Mm -hmm. Because yes. Job went through so much. And, That's right. you know, and, and it wasn't even nothing that Job had did. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was, I mean, that was, it was really favor because yeah. it all turned out mm -hmm. to work in Job's favor. It all yeah. worked for his good in the end. He got back double for his trouble or, or yeah. more than double, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe that most of us don't realize the favor part. See, the favor doesn't mean you don't like it. <laughs> the favor don't always mean is your favorite way to get it. The favor is not always, uh, you know, when you hear people say favor ain't fair. Well, you're going to probably say it ain't fair first when you realize what you had to go through to get to the favor, you know. But in order for Samuel to be the anointed, his mother had to be barren. Right. What if somebody would have came before and then here comes Samuel? What would have made him special? He, Samuel had to be appointed and anointed and placed in position for the right time. So the delay was never mm -hmm. a deny. The delay was never a deny. And so when you look at all these women here, you got Sarah. Who does she have? Isaac. She, the, you know, all the other kids came along before Isaac, but Isaac was the promised one. He was the chosen one. And then here come Rebecca. Who did Rebecca have? Rebecca didn't have no children at first. And eventually here comes jo who come, uh, who was Jacob and, and Esau. Eventually she had Jacob and Esau and, and, and all this stuff. And so now we see here, Rachel, you got Samson's mother who had Samson, one of the strongest judges of all. But they had to go through that, you see, and the, the gift that God gave was one of favor because that person that they became blessed God's people. So, again, favor, when God puts it on your life, can't nobody stop it. Can't nobody stop it. So that's what gives us hope and trusting that God is our strength and our shield. And we find help in that. And I think that if we get hold to the part where he said he's going to bless us after a while, he's going to bless us eventually. You know, uh, then, man, you don't mind working because you know that it's not for naught. You know that what you're going through is not wasted on just anything. It's not just happening. And sometimes we have a hard time with that. But I think that as a black people, as an African people, we have gotten accustomed to waiting for a breakthrough, waiting for God to do something for us. And I know people try to make us feel ashamed about why we always got to wait on God. Why we got to always wait on God. Everybody is waiting on God. Listen, don't 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 fall into that trap. Don't don't even go there. Don't go there. If you can hold on to the eventually, God is going to see me through. God is going to bless me. You know, if the doctor telling you you got a cancer or whatever, look, you can practice false uh, uh, toxic positivity all you want. God needs to heal you. <laughs> you can say whatever you want to say. You need God to actually help you. Say, Lord, help me to hold out until my change comes. Help me to endure until you bring this thing around, God. Help me to make it through this because I know you're going to do it. You done brought me through this. Now you start to recall what God has already done it, you see. And one thing about our God, he is not a liar. I'm going to say it again. My God is not a liar. <laughs> if he say he going to do it, guess what? He going to do it. He's going to do, he do, do it. He cannot tell a lie. He, he is not going to lie. That's Amen. right. He is not going to lie. He don't lie. So I believe God is going to come through for me. And if that's the case, then I got to hold on and wait. Yes. I got to yes. endure. And the Bible says, if you just endure, 
even in the book of Revelation, and this is my closing, I'm going to be done after this. In the book of Revelations, when you read that book, and we're going to do a series on that, by the way. I'm just going to let you all know we're going to do a Revelation series. It's going to be fun. But even in that, he says for those in the very first few chapters of the book of Revelations, he says, those who endure to the end, I'm going to reveal to you my new name. But that means you're going to have to go through some stuff. You're going to have to go through mm -hmm. the pouring out mm -hmm. bowls and everything else that comes in the book of Revelation. But if you're willing, if you're able to endure that and make it through, then you're going to be able to be blessed. That means you can't compromise on your walk. You can't compromise on your faith. You can't compromise because you're having a hard time. That means you can't think about yourself. And the Bible says they that save their life is going to lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you shall gain it. You see, so you got to have the right mindset. You cannot be so selfish and just trying to get through this thing alive. And most of us don't want to die. Most of us don't want to pay for anything. We don't want to hurt. I don't want to give up this because I enjoy it too much. I don't want to get rid of all my sin. I like this little devil. I'll get rid of that big devil and that big devil. But this little devil I got right here, that's my little devil. I want to keep that part. Y'all just keep praying for me, all right? No, y'all got to get rid of it all. You understand what I'm saying? We we don't want to we don't want to hurt. We don't want to be without, and that's where we have to be challenged. But this is where we see tonight that God is willing to take us and bless us when we're barren and when we need him to do something. But sometimes it's going to cost us a little something. It's going to cost us some time, some patience, and we're going to have to give him something in return. At least give him praise. At least give him thanks. You know, and if you make a vow to the Lord, don't change it. Don't make a vow and change. Keep that vow. And, and if you trust in God, make sure you're serious about whatever you're asking for. You know, if you say, God, you get me out of this. I ain't never going to do it again. Don't do it again. Because he heard your vow. You Amen. see, so I ain't trying to scare you, but I'm just letting you know. <laughs> if you're going to worship him, don't be a liar to the Lord because he ain't going to lie to you. You know, he he's a God who changes not. So with that being said, anybody have any other things before we stop? I really enjoyed the lesson tonight. It was fun. And I really enjoyed you all sharing. Anybody else have anything before we stop? We just want to say that we enjoyed the lesson as well. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Sister Tressa. Uh -huh. God bless you. All right. And I see Sister Crystal Van Pelt. God bless you. Thank you for being on tonight. And I think we have another guest uh, from Texas, uh, Pastor Sharkita Smith. I think I saw you there earlier. All right. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and see him. I see you got your hand. I see you there. God bless you. Welcome. And uh, hopefully we continue to get more people here. Uh, so good to see different ones, Sister uh, Monique Henry here. God bless you. Good to see you here again. So I want to uh, just encourage everyone to continue to reach out to others and be a support to them. And um, yeah, the doctor on the line. who is that? Kiana. All right. Wonderful. God bless you. Welcome. Welcome. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, there is uh, it's important that we ask God to um, lead us to 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 kind of reassure us that he's with us and it's important that you pray that god you know when you need reassurance that he's with you that you just say lord reassure me that you're with me he don't mind he don't mind you asking uh jesus was asleep on the boat and the disciples asked him say lord do you not even care we drowning we gonna die here that's what i'm saying you gotta go to him when you're feeling afraid and when you got stuff going on with you because it's when you don't think god is there when you make your biggest mistake then you start trying to do stuff on your own and now you got a big problem you just made it worse so i don't want members of pleasant grove missionary baptist church to behave that way i want you to trust in in him and and if you need reassurance then don't just go to your neighbor and your brother and sister sometimes that does help but you might roll up on the wrong person on the wrong day and they might not give you what you need so that's why you got to learn how to pray for yourself. <laughs> you got you got to learn how to pray for yourself. Amen. I, I might be at work. You might not can reach pastor. So you may need to fall on your knees and talk to the Lord by yourself. Amen. 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 I guess. Guess what? He going to talk back to you. If you listen, he will talk back to you. Won't, won't he, y'all? He will. Yes, he will. He will. He'll talk back to you. Trust me. He'll get you an answer. Well, He'll have a stranger walk out the blue and tell you something. They just be talking about stuff. You're like, whoa, I didn't know. <laughs> God, you, you didn't talk to me or something else, right? All right. With that being said, let's go. All right. I'm going to ask um, I'm gonna ask Mother Barbara if you would dismiss us tonight. I would love that. Mm -hmm. 
Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this lovely lesson tonight. And we just thank the uh, pastor for all the information that he has um, given to us. And Heavenly Father, as we leave, we ask you to bless each and every one of us. And let us take the word there, Father, and use it daily as in our daily walk so that we can be the people and become the people that you would have us to come. So that in that last day in the book of Revelation, that we all will be able to stand because we have learned, we have taken in all your word. We have lived it and let us continue to live it. And that's the best thing that all of us can do is take this word and live it to the best of our power. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Love you Amen. all. Continue to walk.